Lime Scooter Injury. Um, actually not drinking. Um, riding a Lime Scooter, he said he saw the little lip in the curb and was trying to negotiate the lip. And um, he hit the lip, he didn't negotiate it right, and it flipped him over. He remembers flying over the concrete planters that were downtown and landed on his face. And he ended up with like a Lafort II and a left zygoma fracture. Yeah. So we put some plates and screws on, but part of that process is establishing the bite or the occlusion, so we have arch bars in place. So now he's all healed up, he's done well, we just need to get these arch bars out. So if I can maybe hold his chin. What I like to do with the local anesthetic with this is start up here, give a little local, and then you're going to watch the gum tissue kind of swell as I move backwards and push the needle backwards, kind of injecting as I go, getting that whole strip all the way along here numb with only one poke. I'm going to give some on the palate as well to get that tissue numb. We already did the lower left, so now we have the lower right hand side. I'm going to do the same thing. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So start. And you can just watch the that. I'm going to have to actually reposition a little bit. So that took two. You can see I go all the way back. You can see the swelling way back there. Same idea. Let's get this positioned so you can see. Can you see all right there? Yeah. Right, the position you can see. You can actually see a little scar there from the incision. And I can kind of scoot that. I'm going to have to reposition here too. Trying to get the camera angle so you can see and me stay out of your way. It makes yeah. it so I can't do it exactly the way I want to. All right, I'm going to give some Expro as well. Ultra long lasting local anesthetic. Keeps the area numb for two to three days afterwards. So I'm just kind of topping up all the areas that I just was. So I just gave local. Marissa's going to do a great job, or is doing a great job of making sure blood does not go south in the airway. Then I'm going to go ahead and place one piece of gauze here to kind of make sure we don't get any bleeding posteriorly and then here too. And then I need a wire cutter next. With the wire cutters, these wires go all the way around. Um, they're called um, transdental wires. So I'm going to clip these things so I can take them off. I'll clip the top and the bottom just for the sake of efficiency. I actually like taking arch bars off. It's kind of fun. All right, so now get a, a wire twister. By going around the teeth, that's what keeps these arch bars in place. So now I should be able to grab onto this. There's actually a couple wires there, so you can just see that slips out. Take this one out. Now there's actually two here, and I didn't clip one of them. Let's see which one I clipped, which one I did not. There's the one I clipped. So, let's clip this one now. Okay, clipped. Halfway clipped. There we go. Okay, so that's half of the wire holding that arch bar down below. And there's that. Now, just to simplify, I don't have to do this, but I'm going to clip the arch bar just to get half out of the way. At the end, um, I always get a Panorex, a radiograph, to make sure that there's no hardware left in there. All right? Don't make any friends that way. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just actually twisting the wires a little bit while well, she gives me a new wire twister, just untwisting them because it'll make it even easier to cut the wires. CO2, so you know with every breath, air in, air out. The 96 is the percent oxygen, blood pressure down below, and then heart rate up above. Oh man hands. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Okay. So, with this being cut, take this off, get these last three circumdental wires off, and the upper jaw is now done. So, let's get down here. Clipped. And let's go this way. 
Oops. I don't know if that went through. I guess we'll find out, huh? Chew. Did you see it actually tear a piece of my glove? Oh, yeah. It's a little piece of my glove. I have two sets of gloves on. Mm. That would be the reason why. Because these wires are just tough on gloves. And get this out first. Wrap up in my dog a little bit. Last wire. The grand finale. Oh, Perios. Actually, I'm able to grab it. I grabbed it back there. All right. Ta-da. percent overall drop in opioid use and with the proper understanding and use of Experl, you too can see the success that Experl will bring to your clinic. Dr. McClelland, DDS, has been using it in his clinic for a few years now, and he's seen great success in his patients and their pain management every day. In this six-video series, you get a professional master class that will give you the jump start you need to include Experl in your daily routine. It includes a bonus PDF with a patient information handout post-op medical instructions, and a quick look sheet for the materials and supplies for explaining Experl. Go to teachable.com today and get educated on a non-opioid anesthetic that will help your patients have a better day.